Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath. And in this week's episode of our podcast, I wanna talk about evolving business resilience for your remote workforce. And this is a topic we've talked about in some different ways in the past, but I really wanna dive into a few key areas that can really help you think about how to have better resilience with a remote workforce or a hybrid workforce, if that's applicable to your organization. Undoubtedly, in this post-pandemic era, there has been a significant shift towards hybrid and remote or distributed work strategies. And this has posed a number of implications from a crisis management and business continuity and cybersecurity standpoints that didn't exist in the same way before. For example, for one of our clients that is a Minnesota health insurance company, it used to be that their entire workforce was located here in the state of Minnesota. But today, in a more distributed workforce, they can hire talent from anywhere in the world, uh, anywhere in the U.S., I should say. And they have, which means that things like hurricanes, which don't happen here in Minnesota, but can impact your remote workforce, are suddenly a crisis, a business continuity problem that you weren't thinking about or having to deal with before. So it's important that we think about these, this need to adapt our strategies differently to meet these new unique challenges that are posed by having a remote workforce. So the first key point I wanna make is really around crisis management. Um, this First, that this kind of remote work creates a communication barrier. Um, it complicates traditional communications during a crisis because folks are not here in the office. Um, they're working remotely and you have to be able to uh, really play to those needs and be able to communicate to this distributed workforce. Common challenges here are around ensuring message consistency across dispersed teams, about the cultural elements of making sure these folks integrate into your culture and that you're including them in, uh, you're thinking about meetings and inclusion in a way that's different than perhaps what you were doing before. It also brings into play technologies like mass notification tools that perhaps in the past you weren't using because you thought you had easier access to be able to communicate to teams. The second is that it creates new challenges related to cybersecurity and the potential for disruption that you may not have had to consider before. Having individuals working from home creates a new level of cybersecurity risk because of unsecured networks and in some cases, personal devices. For example, most companies are not providing that home internet connection. You're not mandating you have to use this router or this provider and you're not remotely managing those devices. So you're relying upon your employees to keep them patched to ensure that their home Wi-Fi has a secure network, um, that they're using the VPN um, and that there aren't other um, unsecured devices or unknown users that are really accessing that um, their home network. Uh, so having um, better direction and awareness around this is really important. The need for enhanced security protocols and even training around securing your home network is something that companies didn't have to do before. The third element around crisis management challenges is just operational disruption. Well, consumer grade internet, for example, is just not the same as business grade. If my internet goes out at home, um, Xfinity, who's my home service provider, they're gonna get to it. But if my network goes out at my office, first I have a redundant connection, but second, we're a priority for service because it's a commercial internet connection. They're gonna be here much more quickly, usually within 30 to 40 minutes uh, based on previous issues um, that we've had. And they're gonna resolve that much more quickly. You're just not gonna get that at home. So it changes the way we need to think about continuity planning in these situations. They need to be more flexible and they have to account for remote and hybrid teams. The second area of focus is just strategies that you can use to enhance remote work resilience. The first is to really think about multiple communication channels. What are some different communication tools and platforms that you can leverage that maintain clear and consistent communication during a crisis? I think persistent chat tools like Microsoft Teams or Slack or a similar product can really help you with this because it gives you a different channel for asynchronous communication that doesn't have to be real time. It doesn't have to be synchronous. You're doing asynchronous. Um, 
also just the importance of redundancy and ensuring that your team members are reachable. The second, again, as we said, is establishing some cybersecurity best practices. So what are the key cybersecurity measures that you want employees to follow? How do you train them to do that? What about your VPN um, or regular security audits or phishing awareness? Or can you even provide them access to scanning tools that can scan their home network and look for potential, um, uh, potential cybersecurity issues? And then the third, of course, is just adapting your business continuity plans, making sure that you're accounting for remote work scenarios, that you're also helping teams understand that one of your solutions is to go somewhere where they can do work. And that could mean returning to the office. That could mean going into a co-location, or I'm sorry, a co-working facility like a, uh, like a WeWork or something similar, a Regis, that you can go to in order to have connectivity and be able to continue your work in the face of an internet outage. The third area of focus here is just leadership and culture in a remote work environment. I think the role for leaders is different. I think the skill set required to be a successful leader of a team is somewhat different when your employees are remote. It requires a different level of empathy and clarity. It requires, I think, for folks to manage their teams more towards outcomes and the results that you're looking for rather than the old school butts and seats approach of I can see what they're doing, therefore I can direct what they're doing. The role of leadership in maintaining um, the morale of your team and productivity in remote settings is different. Uh, and I think it's even more so during a crisis. I would encourage you to think about ways you can provide clear guidance and support to those remote teams and help them focus on achieving the outcomes that you want to see from their roles. Um, building a resilient remote work culture really requires, I think, focusing on adaptation and helping the teams think about what are those potential disruptors that could disrupt their work at home and how can you help them find strategies to enable them to be resilient. So the key takeaways here are to really think about multiple communication channels, to think through operational disruptions, to make sure you have adaptable business continuity plans that account for these capabilities and how you would deal with disruptions to those, uh, that your leadership needs to be more focused on outcomes, utilizing more empathy and clarity. And then lastly, that you have to think about the cybersecurity issues and the new risks that this creates from a cybersecurity standpoint. I would encourage you to review your own business continuity plans uh, to see how they can be adapted for remote work or how you have successfully adapted those for remote work. Um, and I think look back at our previous episodes where we've talked about this shift over time to more distributed work strategies and how you can take advantage of those and that knowledge sharing uh, to mature your own resilience capabilities. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.